Limited fine art prints are now available on ValerieLynn.com and if you ask yourself why I was gone for so long, I was so invested in finding the best manufacturer for my fine art prints and I finally found one who also works really close with museums and galleries. I didn't know that fine art prints require such craftsmanship, so the essence and my painting approach on the oil painting will be beautifully transformed into a museum quality print. Instead Instead of taking a picture, they went over my painting with a quarter million dollar machine to scan it. We worked really close together and chose a smooth and bright paper, which is produced by the well-known company Hahnemühle here in Germany. The combination of carefully selected paper, pigment, expert craftsmanship in the art manufacturing process and my close collaboration with the team gives these prints such color intensity and luminosity that brings them to their unique life, like an artwork itself. These highly professional produced prints are available in a limited edition. Only a maximum of 200 prints will be produced and you can order them in my shop until April 21st at ValerieLynn.com. They might be sold out before that date. I am so proud how they turned out that I can even show them next to the painting. And another great aspect is that these prints will definitely bring you long-lasting pleasure even after 300 years, they will remain very presentable, which is also relevant for the art market. Also, be one of the few collectors who owns a special piece of the story. So, let us begin. In this video, I will share with you how I have cultivated a healthy and high performative mindset throughout the years, which has helped me to achieve more than I thought would be possible. I am 100% sure that these building blocks, which I will mention in this video, are extremely important for you as an individual to reach your full potential. A full potential which brings a fulfilled life. This mindset I want to bring closer to you is applicable to any area of your life. A universal mindset. For example, I wanted to understand the process behind making paint. I'll explain why later. And I went the most extreme path I could. In the last video, I extracted pigments from the skin of pomegranate, cooked it with alum and sodium. Artists back then couldn't go to an art store and buy pre-made paint in a tube. They had to manufacture their own paint, like a tiny factory, and depending on how established the artist was, they had assistant who built the custom canvas, made the paint, and even finished certain parts of their paintings. By the way, I like to get many of my dishes from antique and secondhand stores. A lot of ceramics and glassware are nowadays too minimalistic for me, and it's kind of missing something. I also found this super cute blouse, I'm going to throw it into the washing machine and wear it tomorrow while making our watercolor binder. Because this concentrated mixture is not our paint yet, it's just the pigment which will dry and become a powder. So to turn this mud into powder, we have to spread it on an absorbing surface, so it can evaporate faster. It has to dry like wet cloves. This is going to take a week and you will be surprised how it's going to look. Only one day has passed and this is how the mud already looks like. Whether you make oil paint, watercolor paint or gouache paint, they all have the same pigment. The only difference is the binder you mix the pigment with. So for the watercolor binder, I'm going to mix first gum arabic with warm water. Gum Arabic is gum from the acacia tree. You can also purchase it in pieces. Gum Arabic makes the pigment stick to your canvas. Then I take <laughs> organic honey carefully. Okay, now I have to heat it up. And mix everything together. I don't know, I have to smell everything like a child. And then we pour in a few drops of glycerin. Glycerin makes your paint, for example, dry slower. There's even watercolor paint with saffron from the saffron flower, shellac from bugs, casein from milk proteins, or starch from vegetables. There are so many possibilities and it's just fascinating how we can transform one thing into another thing. I hope you can see it. I cannot move. <laughs> 
and I do this to filter all bigger particles. When you make your own paint, it has to be nice and smooth and you don't want to have a clump or something in between. I feel a bit stupid to pour this amount into this big jar. <laughs> so a week has passed and yes, this was our mud. All the water has evaporated. And while I'm going to grind the ground from the desert into a golden powder, let us talk about the first component we have to understand to achieve our own mastery, our highest potential, mindset. What is mindset? Mindset is a collection of attitudes. An attitude means how you respond to a pattern of happenings. Mindset decides over your life, not your parents, not your teachers, not your friends. It is your mindset who is responsible for how you see and interact in this world. And everybody can see your mindset because you are constantly reflecting it within what you create, the words you speak, how you treat others, anything that makes you exist. So the powder is actually done. But I want it to be super powdery. Anything that is important to me has to be done with excellence. I'm always aiming for mastery. Whatever I do, even if it's just for fun, I just like to see what I am capable of doing. And I fail, but I still retry it over and over. Do you see, I even respect the making of pigments. I approach everything with respect. And when you do things with respect, valuing the things, you do them great. So mixing this powder took me over two weeks. And the only way I can ruin it is by mixing it with too much of this watercolor binder. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what I do. Anything I approach, I do it and see it with respect. You don't wait to have the right mindset when you achieve a certain skill level, a title or a certain amount of followers. I had so many jobs and one of them was to unpack clothes in a warehouse. And even though it was not my dream job, I still did my best. Where should I place my tools, how to grab the knife to open the package, pull out the plastic bags, fold the clothes. Figuring out an efficient way to work was fun. Be excited about any job, any activity you can do, even if it's flipping burgers. And guess what? I did that too. And I was flexing in the kitchen how good I was at flipping burgers. It's not about what you do, it's about how you think. How you do anything is how you do everything. And you may ask Sylvia, yeah, Valerie, why do you do this? You just could go to an art store and get the colors. Yes, I can, but it's about mindset, an attitude within me. Going through this process, seeing how many possibilities you have to fail, just builds so much respect within me, so much respect towards this craft, kind of an obsession. Art is just so much more than smashing colors onto a canvas. It's also chemistry, it's anatomy, it's understanding humans, it's also history and human psychology. Art is a reflection of a human being and the human being is everything. The human being also reflects nature, reflects the inner and the outer world. It's so much. We haven't explored the meaning of art enough. I know the answers, but, but they, they feel like they are not enough to me. As well, the answer of why are we here? What is our purpose? It Sometimes it feels like I'm in a hamster wheel of thoughts and I get crazy. Am I wasting time if I think so much about these things? But I feel like I'm making improvements in my thoughts. Those improvements are helping me to move forward. I feel kind of obligated to understand these things but also to show you what we are capable of doing. And it's not just the old masters. The old masters are gone. It's time for new masters. I believe that each human being has to reach their own mastery. Each individual is born with their own taste, unique experience and perspective on life. Mastery is effort and courage to walk your self-determined or destined path depending on your belief. Plainly copying someone is like being a parasite, a parasite who attaches itself to its host and drains their blood. 
There may be some exceptions, but in general, a parasite does not contribute anything to life. I know each organism strives for survival and reproduction. And organisms, humans, animals, plants, destroy each other too. But my problem with parasites is that they just sit on you and live from your blood and give nothing back than death and disease. I mean, look at the bees who collect nectar from flowers and transform it into honey, which benefits both the bee and those who consume it. Bees are gifted and this is truly an amazing example how something that is alive can transform raw materials into valuable products. Mastery is connected to individuality. Your mastery is an aspect of reaching your full potential. And imagine this world you would live in if each human being strives for their full potential. Mastery is not just for yourself, it's for humanity and the world we live in. And the beauty of mastery is that the benefits it brings serve both the individual and the collect. Whether one pursues it for egoistic or altruistic reasons, it doesn't matter, it has the same effect on both sides. I don't know if there are other beings who are able to create on so many different levels like us human beings. There are so many narratives about other creatures. I don't know if they exist, but I know that we exist and I am proud to be a human being and you should be too. I'm losing kind of my energy and I thought maybe I could just go outside and I'm kind of craving something sweet right now. I don't eat sweet stuff that often. I try to regulate it because of my skin. When you see a pimple on my face, either it's because I touch my chin so much or it's because of eating too much chocolate. I swear, 20 minutes later, I almost cried. I don't know what's up with this processed food, but it does strange things to my body and my mind. So since a month, I made always sure to have natural alternatives at home, like fruits, honey. I love dates and orange juice. And when I eat those instead of cinnamon buns, I don't have a massive mood swing. I feel mentally stable. Speaking of mental stability, let us talk about anger. Expressing anger is a not welcomed behavior. We all have been so angry that we destroyed something. But look at you, how well you can destroy when you are angry. Anger is a burst of energy, extremely forceful. The art is to allow yourself to be angry and to translate this anger this powerful energy into something constructive, not destructive. If you are angry about circumstances, take this energy and make the change. This is actually the first time where I can completely imagine a painting with the exact golden tone of a frame. This is the canvas and the frame. And the frame is decoration, like my necklace. My necklace is decorating my chest and my face. This is long, my face is long. It's emphasizing my face. And you can play so much with the things that you add to your body, to a painting, a light or a dark frame. Is it a minimal frame or a decorative frame? Are you going to play with these extremes? Do you find a balance? It's so much that you can do. I know it can get overwhelming, but you have to embrace it. So I always had this dark grey hoodie, but I didn't really like the color and the cut because I want my hoodies to be a bit more oversized, but also not too oversized. It's so freezing cold, I'm definitely awake now. And hoodies 
and wool blazers are my favorite pieces of clothes. And when something is new and really cozy, I'm going to wear it for many days in a row. I'm literally going to live in it. <laughs> and it's just so amazing that you can put a layer of cozy and comfort onto your skin and you will feel that way the whole time. And yes, what would be a video of mine if I wouldn't move things around in my room? <laughs> I moved my desk back to its previous position. I feel that my atelier corner is more open and I also like to sit on my carpet from time to time or actually every day. So this way it feels more welcoming and spacious and just better. This is actually my first time painting water. As a child, when I went to the city with my mother, we used to walk for an hour to the city because we had no car and it actually wasn't that far and my mom loves to go on long walks, so I had to begin to love it too. And we always walked along a river and had to cross a bridge. And I always hooked my arm into my mother's so that I wouldn't have to pay as much attention to walking forward and could look to the side while walking so I could watch the river, observe the behavior of water. And I tried to squeeze my eyes and I wished I could stop and slow down time for a while just to see why the water looks the way it does. And I know I can take a picture, but taking a picture does not feel like seeing the water in real life. I don't know how to say this, but I feel like now when I look at the water, I understand it more than me as a child. And it feels like understanding water has also something to do with understanding life. So yeah, this is a really this is really hard for me to explain and I know a really abstract thought. Sometimes I have a statement in my mind and I just know it's true, but I can't provide any arguments to support it yet. So this is a really early thought. Actually a old an old thought, but um still in an early stage. <laughs> I, I just search intensely for an answer and this search can take years, decades, maybe my lifetime, but I'm okay with that because it's beautiful to live and to experience and to express and share the world from my perspective, but also to get to know the experience of others. Good morning, it's 8 a.m. and I think I will add it and then paint or paint and then add it. Sometimes I just count to three and then I wake up. One, <laughs> two, three. Ta da! So I'm done with a bit of editing. Look, it's 16 degrees in my room, but I'm not freezing. Why? Because I ate. <laughs> I used to do intermediate fasting for such a long time, but I just stopped the last two days. And I don't know, I just don't like it to freeze every morning. I feel warm. I also want to not listen just to my mind because my mind can be sometimes wrong. I also want to incorporate what my body tells me and it says, I'm freezing. I'm like, okay, let's eat. It sounds simple, I know, but sometimes I just listen too much to my mind and not to my body. When we look at the water, we can relate it to so many aspects of our lives and our own behavior. For example, the transformation from one extreme to another, like water changing from fluid to solid, and that we are not just one thing, but a diverse being. All these particles that make up a pond, an ocean, 
and water in the air that makes a rainbow visible with the sunlight, the cycle that water goes through. Maybe it is water that explains a lot? I don't know. It's so fascinating to see the water at night, in winter, in an early summer day. It always looks so different and I have I, yeah, I have goosebumps on my palms right now. Look, this is what I love so much about simply existing, learning through observation and empirical attempts. It's worth living. And I know this is a bit audacious to say, but a child who mixes potions and looks what happens is more a scientist than someone who just follows what someone has written in a book. Allow yourself to explore what you are capable of doing. Your own thoughts and perspective on life is valid and needed. <laughs>